is going on, my super sandwiches? Ryan Star here with Kira Bug. It's favorite. Uh, yeah. We're Englishing. We're talking about episode 111. 111 of Dragon Ball Super. We're, yeah, 111 of Dragon Ball Super, because last week was 109, 110, the special. Yes. And uh, it continues off where last week ended with the hits, no pun intended, <laughs> that uh, hit through at, at Jiren with one of my probably favorite lines I've seen in Dragon Ball Super so far. It's like, Assassin of Universe 6, what are you doing? I'm working. Uh, yeah, so Hit and Jiren finally face off. Sadly, the outcome, I mean, it's, it's not an outcome that we all might have wanted, especially if you're a fan of Hit. This, this is me. And no pun intended on me doing this right here. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> Hit had to go, and we'll get to that later. The first part I want to talk about is a couple things that were kind of thrown in there. Number one, the filler. Uh, can please, someone do something re Brienne. I feel like this yeah. is an ongoing thing every single week. Like, I just, I can't stand it anymore. I, I want them to have a purpose. They have to. Because if they don't have a purpose, then all of this filler is for nothing. Okay, I feel like it must be for something, well, right? What I, what I know is, is, is the way Toei does their shows is they focus on the characters that are more important, that they're going to do something in the arc on top of that. Uh, figures, merch, all that stuff, and, and sell it. Mm, I don't see anything that's, that's sellable uh, for, for Re Brienne. They better not have Re Brienne <laughs> figures. Yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing. <laughs> Every time there's a new character introduced in a series, there's always someone that's like, Yeah, man, I like that character. I don't like that character. Now, granted, this is a small minority, you know, seeing uh, the comments on Twitter, the comments on, on these videos, but I have yet to see someone go, you know what? I like Rebrand. If you're out there, say something down below, like, <laughs> yeah. But by the way, before, before I start, the question I want to ask, uh, first of all, I'm going to ask you is, uh, 3,000 likes, that's the goal. I challenge you to get to that. And two, the question is, is which universe is going to go down next? Honestly, I think it's going to come down to between universe six, sadly, and universe two. Two because in the beginning when they show Rebrianne, she talks with Rosie and they're like, I don't know if we can do this. And then Rosie like snaps her out of it and like, you know, of course we can do this. And of course, uh, universe six is the other option in my mind because, uh, well, they lost their trump card. Granted, they don't need him to win, but still losing, it's like losing Goku. It's like, well, that's, yeah. I hit to it's the like, morale. Well, that's that. <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you think is going to go out? Oh, I'm. I mean, hopefully too, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants two to go. Another thing that was kind of filler in the episode is uh, you see Goku kind of chilling back and watching him um, hit and Jiren about to go at it, and then a Mekian show up and dropped opportunity, or I guess missed opportunity, and dropped the ball. I didn't like how the interaction was like, oh yeah, uh, Namekians. It's like there's nothing between Piccolo and them. It's like, oh, you're Namekian too, and then they start fighting, and that's it. Like there was like no dialogue at all. Like I mean, they they showed the Namekians for the first time a couple weeks ago when they revealed them on the actual uh, God Pad that, that mm -hmm. Zeno uses in the magazines. But prior to that, the old, the first time we've seen the Namekians officially was last week when we watched the one-hour special and we saw them briefly stand there. But outside that, it's like, oh, there was a good opportunity to number one to show some backstory, which I feel like is going to happen next week potentially. And two, have an interaction between Piccolo and them, because like it's like, dude, Piccolo, you, you haven't seen your people in forever. Like, I say know, something. right? And yeah. like, you know what? There's there's 50 uh, tax. Yeah, so half half to halfway down, uh, so 24 minutes. That's a long time in Dragon Ball episode. <laughs> a whole years. anime worth of, <laughs> of uh, fighting is still left. Yeah, so I mean, we could still get backstory. We could still get a lot of stuff out of this. I don't know, but you know what bugged me about them attacking Goku? What? Why would you attack the one person who like? possibly well, has a chance of defeating Jiren, to, which clearly to be fair, they can. Goku is seems pretty much out. And we also forgot to talk about the most important part in the beginning of the episode. Freeze the healing uh, Goku. Oh, right. Yeah, well, uh, we, we we're going to get to it. Okay, leave us alone. Um, it, it was basically him repaying his death from Planet Nam. If you guys remember when Goku defeated Freeza, well, technically Freeza defeated himself by cutting himself in half, uh, it was Goku that gave him some key, some energy, and was like, you know what, use that power to get away. I gave him just enough to walk. And he said the same thing. It's like, I gave him just enough to walk, you know. And the funny thing is, uh, he says, no one can see you, right? You're in a blind spot. It was like, is he about to attack him? No. I think what he's honestly doing is, is he didn't want people to see him helping Goku. Because right. it's like, it's out of character for him. Character development. <laughs> but at the same time, he also reveals that he needs him to be Jiren. Because like, we, we've seen how powerful Frieza is. And he's a cocky man. Really, really cocky man or alien sludge purple stuff inside him thing whatever the hell he is but after seeing Jiren he's like you know what I'm not even gonna be cocky for this it's like it's like you're playing a, a video game and then you see a pro go at it it's like oh you know what and it's like well I have no chance yeah so <laughs> you know it, what though does do you think Frieza could have a chance though? no not at all after that you not at all so? I mean I Goku mean, but he actually uh gets stronger really quick like rapidly mm -mm. because the reason why is is when Goku and Frieza fought before the tournament they were dead even Pretty much dead even, yeah. like literally dead even. 
And Goku and his max power couldn't do anything to Jiren. And then he got Ultra Instinct and still couldn't do anything to Jiren. Yeah, but you never know. Yeah. Frieza, Frieza could reach No. Well, the other thing is, is like I mean, they could always do that. Plot armor because that's what Dragon Ball does all the time. But something that's very, very Possibly. important. The most important line in the entire episode was when Jiren sat back after defeating Hit. And he's like, you know what? The strongest people are out. So that, that reveals so hard. Yeah, that <laughs> reveals that Hit indeed, and as well as Goku, are the most powerful fighters in the, the tournament right now. Outside of, obviously, Universe 11. Uh, Toba was powerful, but obviously Goku was above him, and Jiren was kind of a threat. So, with them out, Jiren's out. Jiren's literally just sitting there meditating, and he has like a wall of energy around him. So it's like, if you can break that, I'll fight you. If not, leave him alone until the tournament is done. He's done. Now, let's get to the actual, the, the gritty of it, uh, the fight. Mm. Basically, we see Jiren taking on hit, and the times cube absolutely does nothing. He's sensing him. He's even, he's even using the ability, the Phantom Fist, which we saw in the universe, where he creates a pocket dimension to kind of like go around him. Nothing. And I was like, why does he keep doing it? It's not in Hit's character to keep fighting and doing the same thing if it clearly doesn't work. Apparently, what, what it seemed like he was doing is he was building up his time skip to use his ultimate ability to freeze him in time. I called it, by the way. I'm yeah, just saying. she did. Uh, now, the, the thing that bugged me about that is, and you can debate this many different ways, in which case, from you guys, if you made it this far in the video, I want to hear your thoughts and your thought process down below on this. So, he... When he finally figures out, or uh, I guess takes enough, uh, memorizes his movement and stuff, and pulls the attack off while he's on the ground and gets him, pops up behind him, he actually hits him right here. He uses all the time skip he built out to freeze him in place there, and his entire strategy was, you know what, we're going to stay here and attend the tournament. Now, the thing that bugged me is, and this is the part we can debate it, he was literally at the edge. You could have told, literally, Ka hey, yo, Kami, come over here and help me out, man. You could have literally broken your pride, or whatever the hell it was, had anybody pop in there. You could even destroy the ground underneath him, because... Even though Jaren powered mm. through it and busted it, he still was like struggling. And if you're moving this slow, push him off! Yes, but you never know. Like, this was the argument that I made that if you were to like move him at all, the the time um, it could stop. imprisonment yep. could break and he would be free to yeah, roam that, that, around. That's, that's very much debatable. The other thing I was going to point out is Jiren still has his glare. I mean, we see him when, when Hit tries to finish him off when he realized he can't hold him the entire time. He literally uses glare to defeat Hit. So the other theory you could use is, well, maybe he would just like, you know, you know, he was he had his counterattacks. And that very well is a good enough argument. Yep, but still, try it. Like, the thing is, is he was at the edge of the freaking tournament. <laughs> You can upload them over. <laughs> and why was nobody else watching? You like, know what? That's still a gamble, though. So, like, holding him mean, there is actually less of a gamble. No, than you know what's a gamble? You know what's a gamble? Either you you take a chance to hit right now, or you take a chance to hit later when he's like not imprisoned. Yeah, that's true. It was a win-win situation. Yeah, right. So that's why it's like, there's, like, at least try it. It's like, yeah. Because I mean, no, this is what I would I would have seen. I mean, granted, you could say, well, oh, you no, know, Kobe could have fired his Gallic cannon. Well, he could have used his eyes and stopped it. You could have been like, well, maybe Kale could have transformed and pushed him over. Once again, he could have used his glare to stop it. You could probably destroy the ground underneath him. He probably could use his glare to hold himself in place because he's he's a psychopath. Um, <laughs> I feel like I actually answered my own question right there. Probably. That's probably what happened. And it makes sense. I mean, Jiren's not going to go out that fast. Unfortunately, you know, it wasn't enough and hit it and then get knocked out and defeated. Which so his glare is actually transcends time. Yeah, what they his, were explaining. His entire strength well, transcends yeah, time is basically what they were saying. Jiren is OP. He's by far the most powerful entity that's ever existed in the Dragon Ball universe. And I'm talking about beyond even fan fiction. Like, <laughs> I'm talking about if you're going through Absalom or even Dragon Ball AF or any of that stuff. Any fan fiction exists. I feel like Jiren transcends all those people. Yep. And the question is, is what's going to happen? I mean, obviously, it's going to come down to the way they're setting it up. Is, is Goku is going to have to go over his resolve. And break through the barrier to get Jiren to fight him again. Because he's done. Jiren's like, you know what? I'm out. You know, I defeated Strong Warriors. My job is done here. You guys do the rest. Survive. And no one else has the potential or power to even attempt to fight him. Because when we saw, was the Universe 3 that did it? The robots? When they jumped in to do attack him. Was it Universe 3 or the Universe 1? I, I forgot. No. 158 five, and... 158 uh, and... 15... Uh, and 12. 1, 5, 8, 12. Okay, those are universes that are out. So yeah, I think 3. 3 is the one with the robots. 4 is, is with, with the mouse. Yeah, so universe 3. When they attacked them, they got knocked out pretty much instantly. There was no chance. So yeah, I mean, 
I'm I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. I mean, I, this is Dragon Ball. Goku's gonna miraculously pull out a power out his butthole because he does Probably that a lot. Probably either that or Frieza. You never I know. Don't know. I don't know. I just the thing that bugs me about Frieza is we finally got some Frieza action, but he has not gone golden yet. I'm like, yeah, dude, go I golden. Know. Do your thing. Blow everybody up. Maybe he has a trump card that he got in heaven. I don't know. or hell. I should. Say. I mean, the only trump card he got <laughs> is what he revealed, where he basically used mental training to figure out how to maintain his golden form, which. That's about it, and it worked well. I mean, when he came yeah. back and fought against Universe 9 as well as Goku, he had a much wilder power. So it's like, Frieza has a lot of potential here. But honestly, compared to Jiren, it's not it. Uh, honestly, what they should do is they should just talk to, what is it, Universe 9, 10? What's no. Jiren? 11. 11. They should <laughs> just talk to Universe 11, who's all about <laughs> justice, and be like, you know what, when you guys win, when you guys win, uh, can you wish us all back, please? <laughs> They hey, hey yo, Jaren, Jaren, you're powerful now. Can you just go beat up Zeno up there? You know, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Well, they the winner gets a wish, right? The winner does get a wish, and they I haven't mean, revealed hey. what the wishes are yet. But no one, the thing is, is Universe Eleven views Goku and everybody else as like not justice. Definitely, Goku is the least justice person to Topo at it's all. Ridiculous. Because he hates him. Like literally, the, the, Topo literally hates Goku. So that's that's not gonna happen. But what will happen is, is Goku's gonna somehow figure out how to get into his power. Bust out the Ultra Instinct and have an epic round two that's probably yes. gonna lead to Jiren's defeat. Or Jiren's gonna win, and then there's gonna be something that's completely surprising to us at the end of yeah. the series. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section below. 3,000 likes is the goal. Next week, we have some uh, Kabe Vegeta action where uh, we got Vegeta Woo! kind of mentoring him again. They take it on, I believe they said Universe 2, was it? I don't remember. Uh, mm -hmm. Or Universe 4. Universe, it was Universe 4, uh, which is Kutelos, the mouse. And that's gonna be fun, but for now, I feel like the action is kind of gonna slow down until we get to that climax game between Jiren and Goku. Yep. With that said, let us know your thoughts down below. Everything you guys, uh, you know, thought about when you watched the episode, anything we might have missed as well, because I'm sure there's something that we can talk about down below. But other than that, we hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekends. It's been Kira Bang Rhyme Style. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Peace.